to do something acoustic today and I was thinking maybe I should learn something really challenging and technical, something that's going to impress other guitar players on the internet. But then I thought, no, I don't feel remotely motivated to do something like that. And besides, it's not really the kind of music that I like. It's not the kind of guitar player that I want to be. And it remains just so baffling to me why things that are technical and difficult are valued so highly by people on the internet. And uh, to be honest, most of the music that I love, most of the music that touches me the most deeply is just very, very simple. And in guitar terms, it's often not much more than just this kind of thing. So with that in mind, what I want to talk about today are some acoustic rhythm guitar grooves or feels that really matter. And I think if you're in a band or if you're recording, if you're a songwriter, then this is going to be the stuff you end up doing 90% of the time. So it pays to get really good at this basic kind of stuff. On one level, I suppose this might seem like a bit of a beginner's lesson. And if you are a beginner, then you definitely want to prioritise working on this stuff. It's just so important. But if you're a more advanced player, it's very easy to be dismissive of this kind of stuff and just think, oh, well, it's easy. And then you get to work on the technical stuff that's going to impress other guitar players in internet land. But I think uh, there is going to be something for more advanced players in this lesson too. And I'd like you to focus on how good you can get this basic stuff to sound, really focus on the nuances of groove and feel. So let's get started. I'm going to take you through each of these grooves, going to explain the basics, and then I'm going to get into some of those subtleties as well so you can get them sounding really good. start here then. It's the good old down, down, up, up, down strumming pattern. It's a must know rhythm guitar feel. Uh, I'm sure most of you will know this pattern already, but it's amongst the very first strumming patterns I will teach to a beginner guitar player. And the reasons are it is just one of the most widely used, most useful strumming patterns. And it just works in so many situations. And I think when you're, you're putting together guitar parts or writing songs, there is a, a sort of temptation to come up with something more fancy, but uh, you don't need to reinvent the wheel with this stuff. Very often this basic strumming pattern is gonna be the one that works best. So let me just take you through the, the basics of it. Then there are a few more things you might like to think about if you wanna get it sounding really good. So as I say, that the strumming pattern here is down, down, up, up, down. That's the basic pattern. So uh, you can play this uh, on whatever chord you like. I'm just going to use some simple chords for most of this video. So down in the open position, just a C chord. Just a nice relaxed down, down, up, up, down. And the thing to realise with this pattern is it's based on an underlying eighth note kind of feel. So if you've got your beat, kind of one, two, three, four. We're feeling one and two and three and four and eighth notes against that beat. And really the secret with this pattern with a lot of rhythm guitar stuff is just to keep your strumming hand moving in that mm. kind of underlying subdivision grid, if you like. So I'm going to be feeling one and two and three and four. And my strumming hand is always going to be moving. And then you've got a choice when you hit the strings, when you miss the strings, which of those strums you emphasize. So if you notice with this strumming pattern, always moving my strumming hand, but I'm missing the strings in a couple of places. So I'm going down, miss, down, up, miss, up, down. And I miss it again at the very end. So I just want to keep you up strumming hand moving. For me, the strumming motion is coming from, it's, it's a bit of the forearm, it's a little bit of the wrist. The most important thing is to stay relaxed. But if I'm playing it all from the forearm, that, that starts to sound a, a bit clunky. And likewise with, with the wrist, I don't feel I've got 
as much control if I'm just playing with the wrist. So of course, there are always going to be exceptions. You will see some great players who, who make those techniques work. But for me, it's a, it's, a, it's a combination of both wrist and forearm. So that's the basic pattern. And it's important you just practice that over and over until it becomes absolutely automatic, until it sounds really locked in and relaxed. So you might well want to practice this one with a metronome. Just make sure your strumming hand is really loose, that you're not kind of rushing or snatching any of those strums. Uh, as far as the, the tone you want, I mean, I, I tend to recommend just going for a nice confident strum. You don't want to play too timidly and too quietly. Neither do you want to really bash the guitar. Um, in most cases, I think that's kind of leads to it to a loss of of tone if you're doing that. So generally I just go for a kind of confident medium volume. That's my starting point. And then uh, depending on the situation, I might sometimes emphasize or accent certain strums or I might uh, you know, go a little bit quieter in certain sections of the song just to add uh, a little bit of dynamic. Um, another thing with this one is you, you might like to accent beats two and four. That's very often where the accents will fall, especially if you're playing with a, with a band, with a rhythm section, that's where the snare drum is going to hit. So you might want to go one, two, and three, and four. It doesn't need to be anything too much, but just a slight emphasis on two and four is gonna sound good with this pattern, I think. And remember this pattern, all of the patterns I'm gonna talk about are not absolutely fixed, and I might well play some variations or add in some extra strums as well. That's quite easy to do if you've got your hand moving in this eighth note kind of rhythm. Sometimes I might throw in some of those other uh, parts of the beat as well, so. <laughs> so. Very often I might hit the strings on the and of four for example. So it's definitely not one of these fixed kind of patterns. And there are lots of ways you can practice this stuff. If you are a beginner, I'd recommend just sticking on one chord or even just using the open strings and just getting your strumming hand working with this pattern. But then you can try some chord progressions. So the chord progression that I just played was an A minor seven. I just had my, my pinky down at the third fret on the top string as well. Going to G and then C. G, and then I went C uh, to, to this chord here. We're just taking the bass note down from a C to a B, and then D. So that's just a, an example of a kind of practice progression you could use to work on this particular strumming pattern, but you can come up with your own chord pattern if you want to. This next one is again an eighth note based pattern, but I'm filling in all of the available subdivisions. So it sounds a little bit busier and it's got a bit more of a driving quality. So if we just do this on an A minor chord, we've just got down, up, down, up all the way. But if you just play it like that, it's gonna sound very stiff and wooden. So again, it's all about just the emphasis and where you place the accent. So you've got options here, but I would again recommend you emphasize the two and the four and play the rest of the strums a little bit more softly. So. And as soon as you start doing that, then it all starts to come to life a little bit more. So you just want to listen out for that, the accents, the tone you're getting as well. And uh, you know, even things like the type of pick you use does make a difference with the tone. So for, for most of these examples, I've got a, uh, this is a USA nylon Dunlop pick 0.73 millimeters. So kind of a medium pick, but it does flex a little bit. And I find with acoustic stuff, particularly with strumming, I do prefer a slightly lighter pick than I would use for electric guitar stuff and for lead guitar stuff. But you know, I've got a few, few different picks here. You know, another one that I like for acoustic strumming is a Fender thin pick and, um, and 
to me that's got a noticeably different sound to the Dunlop pick and we're getting kind of pretty nerdy here with sort of pick choice for acoustic strumming but it it can be significant ultimately it comes down to personal preferences or you know if you are recording then you might well like to audition different picks and it, it might not make much of a difference or, or it might make a big difference depending on the context depending on the song so get comfortable with that one and when you're ready you can plug in a chord progression I was just using a very simple four chord cycle so A minor to C to G and I was keeping my first finger down then that nice kind of add 11 sound and then F or F major 7 round again A minor C The second time round just holding on that G that G add 11 chord one's a favourite of mine. I associate it with people like Neil Young who tends to use this kind of pattern in a lot of songs but it's very widely used. You can use it in kind of indie rock acoustic ballads. You hear it in kind of a lot of early Radiohead stuff as well for example and again really it's an eight note based pattern. It sounds like this and I'm keeping my strumming hand bouncing in eight notes there one and two and three and four and and again I'm accenting two and four but what I'm doing is on two and four I'm playing the higher strings and on the rest of the eight notes I'm emphasizing the lower strings so I think with the patterns that we've had so far uh, I'm generally just strumming all of the strings quite evenly but you don't have to do that you can kind of emphasize certain strings in certain parts of the pattern so here it's the low strings and then the high strings Neil Young feel you might like to palm mute the lower strings a little bit and you can just let some 16th notes creep in there as well so that's quite easy to do if your hand is moving like that you can just catch the the upstrokes in between some of those eighths idea and the chord progression that I was using for that one was just an E I was going to to a C I've got the G in the bass there, and then I'm just moving that shape up two frets and just going around that a couple of times of that cycle I'm just going to an A7 or an A7 sus4 and this one works really well at a whole range of different tempos you can go from kind of indie rock ballad slower tempos through to kind of medium tempos uh, if you wanted to you could play this one with a bit of swing as well that sounds cool of options and just from that one pattern you can get quite a, a variety of different moods and feelings. This one's a slightly busier 16th note strumming pattern used by a lot of my favorite bands people like the Smiths, The Cure, Susie and the Banshees so it's a really cool strumming pattern. 16th notes just means that we're dividing each beat into four subdivisions so one, two, three, four 
Uh, a lot of people will uh, you know, vocalize 16th notes as one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So uh, I'm just going to do this down here with a, with a D major seven chord. And important with all of these patterns, but this one in particular, that you stay super loose and relax because even at a medium tempo if you're playing 16th notes you're going to be doing some quite busy strumming so make sure you stay loose stay relaxed and accents are once again important you don't just want to play this or it sounds completely lifeless so uh, you might like to try something like this just emphasizing some of those strums to create a, a kind of rhythm on top of those underlying 16th so da 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 and you can take that around a chord progression the chord progression i was using at the start of this video i was at an e power chord here fifth string root up at the seventh fret i've got the open top two strings and i'm just moving the bass note around course timing and feel are all important here and there are no secrets you just need to be really comfortable with these patterns so they're completely automatic and you can relax with them and various ways you should be practicing these patterns of course you can play them with a metronome and really listen to whether you're locked into that click you might like to play them with drum patterns drum loops or backing tracks that can make practice a little bit more fun but also just playing these patterns on your own getting used to your own internal metronome your internal clock and we're not talking about timing perfection here and being absolutely metronomically perfect and i don't know if anyone can do that and certainly personally listening back to my performances i will rush a little bit i will sometimes be behind the beat i'm moving about a little bit it sounds human and uh, that, that's what i want i don't want things to be absolutely perfect but i just want things to feel good and to feel and sound exciting <laughs> This next one's got a bit of a swing feel and really with any of these patterns you can introduce a bit of swing if you want to but this pattern particularly works well with swing and the way I'm playing it it's got a bit of a country feel but it will work well in a, a range of different styles again Neil Young might use a, a pattern like this in more of a, a folky kind of rock context and uh, it could easily sound bluesy or you could use it in more of an indie rock kind of context if you wanted to uh, but the basic idea is this we've got and i'm playing the low strings and then the higher strings so on the first beat I'm playing the lower strings you could just play the root note you could you play a couple of strings you don't need to be too fussy with this pattern i don't think then I'm striking the higher string. So one, two, three, four. And then I'm introducing some swung eighth notes with an upstroke of the pick. So I've got those accents on two and four as well that would be a basic version of that pattern that works really well you could introduce a little bit more motion a little bit more melody in the bass notes which is what i was trying to do in my chord progression i just started on a g chord i've got the root note and i'm playing the fifth string with a little hammer on going to a c chord taking the bass down d bringing my first finger over hammering onto the B and C so 
lots of ways you can do that, but uh, yeah, with that kind of folky context, it's nice to you know, introduce a little bit of motion in the bass notes, add in some little embellishments, just those little simple hammer-ons are really effective. <laughs> Strumming is not the only game in town, of course, and you might like to arpeggiate some of your chords. So pick out some of the individual notes and you can just do that in a random kind of a way that can sometimes work. Or you might like to stick to a fixed kind of a pattern. And I tend to like simple patterns, particularly if I'm playing in a band kind of context. And this one always works well. So just demonstrating this on a C chord and I'm picking strings five, three, four, two, down, up, down, up with the pick. That would work on a D chord, you just move everything over to the next set of strings. If you're playing chords with a six string root, you might have to adjust the pattern slightly. I might play something like this. So I'm just skipping the fifth string there. I'm playing six, three, four, two. And in my chord progression I think I had a capo on at the third fret just to change the tone a little bit and I was just playing around with a C chord shape so I had that up two frets and then coming down to the C shape and I think I had a little descending idea so G just taking down the bass note to E minor and then going to a B7. Of course not every song has to be in 4-4 time and the next most common time feel would be something based on threes, so kind of a waltz type thing or else a 6-8 feel which is this kind of thing. And this is super common in popular music. I would tend to count this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 though there are various ways you could notate and feel that. And the strumming pattern that works best for this, it's a, another essential rhythm guitar feel. It goes like this. We've got down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. One, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and. And accents are important here, as always. So you can emphasize the first strum a little bit, and then it's beat four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, sometimes this feels to me almost like a slow four, four with each beat divided into three. And if you think of it like that, then you're, again, you're just emphasizing where the snare drum hits. So one, two, three, might like to open up and emphasize the higher strings on the accents and emphasize the lower and the middle strings on the rest of the strumming pattern. And the chords that I was using just now were, I had a kind of triad thing going on. So an A, going down to a G, going down to a D triad, had the open fifth string and the open top string as well. So. Well, that's it for this video. I'm sure there are a few more of these rhythm guitar feels that I could have spoken about, but those were the ones which sprung to mind as being amongst the most common and most useful. It's really worth working on this stuff, I think, no matter what your level. And it wouldn't be a bad idea putting together perhaps a little half hour rhythm guitar workout and doing that two or three times a week. You could just spend five minutes on each of these patterns 
either with a metronome or with a backing track and it'd be a really good way to sharpen up your rhythm guitar skills. If you would like tab and backing tracks those things are going to be up on the Patreon page as usual. I will tab out all of the examples from this video and put my backing tracks up there as well and I think the backing tracks just make practicing this stuff a little bit more fun so if you'd like to access those you can pay what you like and uh, get them up on the Patreon page. Thanks a lot for watching, hope you found this video interesting and helpful and I will see you next time.